to address a new parliament, a newly elected president, a newly elected parliament, la, uh, a newly elected parliament rather. And uh, under the provisions of that particular article is that pursuant to a notification from the president, a notification directed to the Speaker of the National Assembly, that is Moses Wetangula, as well as the Speaker of the Senate, Honorable Amazon Kingi, Parliament, and uh, this is the two houses of the bicameral parliament are going to have a joint address from the president today. And pursuant to Article 22, subsection 2 of the National Assembly Standing Orders and the Standing Orders Number 25, subsection 2 of the Senate, uh, requires the speakers of the two houses of parliament to notify members of the time and the date of a joint sitting of the Houses of Parliament convened in accordance to Article 132, subsection 1 of the Constitution. That has been done and members of Parliament are already in the chambers uh, waiting for that particular address from His Excellency Dr. William Samoy Ruto. The President is already in Parliament buildings and this is after he sort of uh, presided over or inspected the guard of honor mounted uh, outside parliament buildings before he makes his way into parliament buildings and he will first uh, get to speak to the speakers of the two chambers that is Honorable Moses Wetangula as well as Amazon Kingi uh, on the speaker's wing and thereafter the the team will be making its way to uh, the National Assembly's chamber for that particular address. And uh, this particular joint sitting has been convened pursuant to the National Assembly Standing Orders Number uh, 21, Subsection 1. And uh, we'll be having uh, the Speaker of the National Assembly as well as the Speaker of the Senate first address members of parliament uh, notifying them that they have a guest who happens to be uh, the president of the Republic of Kenya for that particular uh, address and thereafter he'll be inviting uh, the president to address the nation in regards to the opening of the 13th parliament as well as his agenda for the members of the public. After the address by the president We'll be having another address by the speakers of the National Assembly and the Senate. And that happens to be the only order in the order of business uh, today. And uh, after the address by President William Ruto, the House will be adjourning until next week. But of importance to Kenyans is uh, what the President could be uh, making his remarks on the floor of the National Assembly today in this particular joint sitting. And you understand that um, the Kenya Kwanza wing is the wing that formed government. And from uh, the expectations from members of the public and Kenyans is that the president uh, is expected to speak about unifying the nation at a time when uh, the peace and tranquility of the nation is quite important for him to spearhead the development development agenda. On your screens is uh, direct at the entrance of uh, the chambers. You have uh, members of the clerk as well as the religious leaders already in line and waiting for any signal to get to make their way to the chambers this afternoon. And this is to allow for the president to make his remark. You'll understand that the president has a lot in regards to his manifesto. He has made a couple of speeches and agendas in regards to his maiden speeches that he has made not only in Kenya, as well as in the United Nations General Assembly. On your screens at the moment, uh, members of the clerk, as well as members of the religious uh, bodies, relevant religious bodies in the country, as, as well as the judiciary, the executive, another executive wing of government, the judiciary making uh, their way to the chambers this afternoon. They are being led by the Chief Justice Martha Kome, closely followed by Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu, as well as the judges of the Apex Court now making their way into uh, Parliament this afternoon where they'll be, they have their um, spaces already set out uh, for them to reserve for them as they follow up on this particular uh, 
speech by the president, a highly anticipated speech by members of the, of the public, not only in Kenya as well as from the neighboring countries. We'll be waiting to hear what the president has in store for the nation as well as for probably matters that may affect the East African community as well. You understand that uh, matters of our nation also, in a way, get to affect our neighboring communities. And uh, issues to do with matter security are some of the issues we expect the president to address this afternoon. The president, in his remarks at the United General Assembly, when he made his very first maiden speech, uh, rallied the other African states to work together. And this is for the fight uh, for the three diseases through the mobilization of the much needed uh, resources. We expect the president to highlight uh, his health agenda to members of the republic. And in this, this is in regards to his uh, manifesto that seeks to ensure that a health is easily accessible for every Kenyan. The other issue that members of the public as well as members of parliament from both uh, houses of the bicameral parliament expect him to address is the issue of debt that um, the country has been accumulating debts over the past few years. And during his speeches that he's managed to make uh, in the country as well as outside the country, the president uh, speaks of the World Bank as well as the International Monetary Fund and other lenders uh, to extend the pandemic-related debt uh, relief to the worst hit countries. And this is especially those affected by the devastating combination of matters conflict, climate change, and COVID-19. Kenya, having come from the scores of COVID-19 just the other day, we expect the president to highlight uh, some of his agenda in regards to the recovery of Kenya's economy that uh, is close to the manifesto of the Kenya Kwanzaa government. The Business at the port of Mombasa just uh, resumed the other day, and we expect uh, uh, the president to also highlight in that regards uh, matters of to do with the businesses in the country, not, on, on, not only uh, on maritime as well as um, the small and medium enterprises, how uh, his government moving forward is going to ensure that uh, the country uh, matters businesses are not affected in any way owing to the matters uh, taxation. And one of the key issues uh, we expect the president to uh, rally members of the both uh, houses of parliament is probably make amendments to the finance bill to ensure that matters taxation on matters businesses are somehow lowered, uh, taxes are levied to various businesses are lowered to ensure that uh, businesses uh, do not close down and for easier expansion and operationalization of businesses in the country. The, another issue that is affecting the country is the issue of drought and uh, we expect the president to address how his government is going to ensure that Kenyans from whatever walks of life can get food and we don't have to rely on relief food year after a year. You understand that over four million Kenyans are faced with the drought challenges and some of the regions such as the arid and semi-arid areas already receiving relief foods and we expect the president besides um, the issue of subsidizing the fertilizer prices we expect the president to highlight some of the key issues that he hopes uh, to bring into the agricultural sector to protect the key sector that is key to the economy as well as the livelihood of normal Kenyans in the Republic of Kenya. If you're just joining us, this is uh, the very first joint sitting of the 13th Parliament. Parliament commenced its business last week. And this happens to be the second sitting 
of Parliament, although this is a joint sitting of the two houses of Parliament, where President William Ruto is set to address uh, the nation in regards to his agenda. And one of the issues for him and his government to deliver their manifesto to Kenyans, one of the key issues is to have the two houses working hand in hand. Here we are talking about the National Assembly and the Senate that has previously been um, crowded uh, with issues of supremacy battles, with bills uh, taking time to get uh, the nod of each house and for the Kenya Kwanzaa government or the government of the day to uh, deliver its agenda without much of a halt. We are going to probably see the president uh, speaking to the heart of uh, members of parliament from both houses, uh, seeking for them to work uh, in a collaborative manner to ensure that uh, key bills that are going to necessitate uh, him and his cabinet deliver to the Kenyan public are uh, passed and at passed in time to ensure that um, the seamless delivery of services to the members of the public. The chambers are full as we speak and more members of parliament keep making their way into the chamber. The president is expected at any minute from now be addressing uh, parliament, a joint sitting of parliament and before that he'll be ushered by the speakers of the two houses to address the nation. We have dignitaries from around not only Kenya, but as well as from foreign countries who will be seated at the speaker's gallery following up on that particular address by the president. And just to mention some of the issues that are key to the heart of Kenyans is the cost of living that you expect the president to outline his agenda on how his government will ease in the burden of the cost of living, matters of the national unity to ensure that the country is united irrespective of what side anyone might have voted during the 9th of August agenda as well as the legislative agenda which is key for his government to deliver on their promises to the country at large. If you're just wondering about the numbers in the chamber, it's a fully packed house. We have 349 members of parliament. We already have 47 elected uh, senators, as well as a number 20 who are nominated, bringing the total to the number, the total number of senators to 67. And following the appointment of some of members of parliament, as well as uh, members from the Senate, to the recently announced cabinet appointments. We expect some uh, by-elections in some of the regions to ensure that um, nothing actually is halted and uh, service delivery is done in a seamless manner. When the president was addressing a cabinet or some of the, the cabinet nominees as well as uh, the nation at large when he made his uh, cabinet appointment of the men and women who are going to succeed uh, the outgoing cabinet, the cabinet that was led by the retired president, uh, that is Uhuru Kenyatta, the president spoke of or have hastening as well as uh, delivering uh, the agenda. He said that the cabinet and the executive have no time to waste and the earlier they assume uh, the various cabinet uh, positions or various offices of cabinet it is that soon that they would be uh, probably be delivering their manifesto to the members of the public. And uh, one of the issues that the president might be rallying members of the public, uh, members of parliament today, is a formation of key committees that are crucial for the vetting of uh, the 25 men and women who have been selected, who have been appointed to serve in various cabinets, as well as advisories of various cabinet secretaries, as well as the presidency on matters are uh, delivering the agenda to the public. Thereafter, the conclusion of uh, the president's address today, 
in the next seven days with the National Assembly as well as the Senate set to sort of have their normal sitting beginning next week Tuesday. We expect uh, the both houses of parliament to commence the debate on the president's, uh, the president's speech. Uh, they will be debating that particular speech for the next few days and this is in line with the requirements in the constitution as well as the standing orders of each of the houses as well as uh, continue with uh, delivering with the uh, issues to do with the uh, house business of this particular 13th parliament. Waiting in high anticipation is the mood at the National Assembly at the moment as members of the bicameral houses of parliament keep streaming into the chambers. Uh, the members of the clerks are moving up and down to ensure that everything is seamless and is in order when that particular addresses any moment from now. We understand the president is having um, sort of a uh, deliberations with the two speakers before he comes to parliament to address members of the two houses and key among one of the issues that Kenyans at large are waiting to hear is uh, the expectations and the state priorities for the next 100 days of President William Ruto's administration which will in turn inform parliament's legislative agenda. On your screens at the moment, members of the clerk drawn from the National Assembly as well as the Senate. The two maces are already at the entrance uh, of the chamber, making their way to the National Assembly. The Speaker of the National Assembly, Moses Wetangula, as well as Amazon Kingi, and the President right in the middle, making marching uh, to the National Assembly this afternoon, closed. Um, followed closely by the bodyguards as well as the deputy speakers of the two houses of parliament. The mace is just entering the chamber, uh, followed by the speakers of both uh, the National Assembly and the Senate, signaling that the business of this particular joint sitting will commence any minute from now. The National Assembly, they are all upstanding. Uh, members of the two houses of parliament are all upstanding in regards to matters. Uh, respect for the fifth president of the Republic of Kenya, who is making his way into the chamber, sitting at the required uh, set out uh, spaces where they are taking their place at the moment. The president right in the middle, the speaker of the National Assembly at the extreme right with Moses uh, Amazon Kingi at the extreme left. The mace is being placed at its um, respective place, signaling, uh, the signal, signaling the commencement of business. And now handy over so we can follow up on the live proceedings happening at the chambers this afternoon. Enjoy your viewing.
This lecture, allow me to invite our spiritual leader, leader to pray. May I request we bow before God in prayer. <clears throat> our loving Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we stand in your presence this afternoon, thanking you for this day, the day that you have made, that we rejoice, we celebrate as a nation. Thanking you, Lord, for coming through for us in the concluded elections, and much more so, dear Father, for giving us a leadership that will lead this country into divine purposes. We want to thank you so much for this occasion that we have today in this 13th Parliament, the coming together of our leader, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya and the Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces. Lord, we thank you even for all the leadership that is here today. We thank you for every Kenyan that is watching and participating in today's occasion, right here at home and wherever our people are. We pray that today shall mark the beginning of great things for this nation. Father, we thank you for the peace that you have given us in our country. We thank you so much, Lord, for the tranquility that we are experiencing. Lord, we thank you for the cohesiveness and we thank you for giving us a leadership, dear Father, that will lead this nation towards your will. So we commend ourselves and we commend this occasion, this afternoon, into your hands, that you will come through for us. Loving Father, we ask that your presence fill and saturate this house. Lord, we thank you that even as we sit and hear from our President, His Excellency, Lord, we ask that you will enable us to internalize, especially the vision that you have given him and the leadership, the entire governance of this nation. Father, we pray, help us as Kenyans, O oh God, loving Father, to do whatever it can take to making sure that we all fold our sleeves and get to work. Because, dear Father, this nation needs your intervention economically and in all ways. So be with us this afternoon and let your presence fill this house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of Allah, most gracious and most merciful, Praise be to Allah, the Lord, the creator and sustainer of all creations. You alone we sincerely worship and you alone we humbly ask and pray for your help and assistance in everything we do and undertake. Guide us, O Allah, to the right and straight path that would grant and lead us to the success in our world and in the hereafter when we will all be meeting and assembled before you for accountability and final judgment on our deeds in this world. Ya Allah, this afternoon, we have gathered to officially open our 13th parliament in a ceremony whose chief guest is our president, His Excellency, Dr. Samoe William Ruto. Ya Allah, be with us throughout this ceremony and shroud us and our country with your love and mercy. Guide all the speakers to speak to what pleases you most, O oh Allah. We thank you for giving us, for giving the Republic of Kenya with the President, Governors, members of National Assembly, Senators and members of County Assemblies through a democratic and peaceful election process. O oh God, you have chosen members of the uh, National Assembly and entrusted them with the delicate task of, of making critical decisions through legislations, oversight, and to provide general and special leadership. Ya Allah, 
I commit to them, to you, to grant them, and all our leaders, Solomonic wisdom, correct and right vision, and the strength to deliver their task and mandate in the best manner that will bless you, O oh Allah. May they dispense their mandate fairly and with justice in serving your servants as ordained in your holy, holy book, the Holy Quran, uh, verse 135 of Surah to nisa all you who believe, stand out firmly for justice as, with, as witness to Allah, even though it be against yourselves or your parents or your kin, be he rich or poor, Allah is a better protector to both than you. So follow not the last of your hearts, lest you may avoid justice. And if you distort your witness or refuse to give it, verily, Allah is ever well acquainted with what you do. I pray that you grant them love, unity, and cooperation among themselves so that they could discharge their task effectively, effectively and efficiently. Allah grant them and their families good health and long life so that they continue serving citizens of this country in the manner that pleases you. Ya Allah, we pray that you shower your blessings on our nation, our people, our leaders, and all our work, especially this gathering and all its participants. Grant us peace, love, unity, and prosperity. The nation is facing myriad of challenges. Drought is devastating and taking lives of innocent and less privileged people. High cost of living is no better. Corruption by dishonest and greedy public servants remains the worst and the most difficult challenges our nation ever faced. My special prayers is for blessed rainfall, the leaders to, uh, to honestly address uh, and discharge their duties <clears throat> to take uh, their mandate uh, head on, head on the, on the, corrupt, on the corruption, and resuscitate and revive the economy. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon the messengers of Allah and on all righteous men and women ever lived on this earth. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Almighty and ever living God, we come to you this afternoon with hearts full of gratitude for the blessings you have bestowed on our country and on uh, all the people in Kenya. As we gather here today, we thank you more especially for our President Honorable Dr. William Samoy Ruto and his deputy, Mr. Rihadi Gashagwa, and all the elected leaders with whom he will run this country. Today, as we gather in this August House for the solemn opening of the 13th Parliament, we pray for our nation and all the leaders that you may anoint the government that you have given us. We thank you humbly that you may bless our leaders, not only in the government, but also in all other areas that run this country. We also pray for your blessings upon all the arms of the government. Bless all the members of the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary, so that they may dispense their duties with integrity and respect for the rule of law. May they always seek to serve the interests of the people of Kenya and not their own interests. May, and we pray, Almighty God, that they may serve you as they serve the people of this nation with, de with dedication and love and call it a clarion of their leadership. Lord, Grant the members of the National Assembly and the Senate the wisdom to handle the legislature and legislative agenda of this nation with respect and to the true values rooted in your word, the Gospels, and our culture. Guide, guide them, Lord, to always make laws that will uplift the lives of our people in Kenya. Give them the graces to allocate resources wisely without external influence 
or in pursuit of their own personal interests. We pray that they may protect all their freedoms and liberties that the Kenyan people have worked for and so hard, so hard to achieve all the years that have gone. Guide them to uphold the constitution and the rule of law. Lord, guide them to be selfless leaders who will revere your words always and your presence in this house. Lord, as we gather today, we are aware of the many challenges that our nation is facing. We pray for lasting peace and social cohesion in our country. We ask you, O oh Lord, that you may come to the aid of all the people who are suffering from conflict and grant them peace. Through the actions and the deliberate, deliberate efforts of your, our leaders, we pray that you will grant this nation lasting solutions to the economic depression that our nation is facing. May our leaders move with speed to address the drought situation that is threatening the lives of millions of Kenyans and the insecurity that is experienced all over in the country. We also pray that you, Lord, you may target the hearts of the people of Kenya and all people of goodwill so that they may come to the rescue of all who suffer the need of food, water, shelter, and health. Grant us your peace, grant us your solace, and grant us your tranquility as we go into this session. We ask this through Almighty God, His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord forever and ever. Almighty God, your word encourages us to pray for kings and all those who are in authority so that we may live in peace. We present to you your servant, the servant of this nation, His Excellency Dr. William Samoriuto, our president, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, the deputy president, the newly appointed cabinet secretaries, and all those who hold leadership positions under them. We pray that you may give them great wisdom as they discharge their leadership roles so that our country may be governed in ways that promote peace, national unity, and the well-being of every Kenyan. May you enable the president and all his advisors to constantly hear and obey your voice in discharging their duties. May the executive always recognize that the opportunities you have given them in governance are for the improvement and well-being of the people of Kenya, so that your glory may fill our nation. Lord, protect them, all these your servants, together with their families, from any danger that may befall on any one of them and from any other agents that distract their leadership dispensation. Almighty God, we pray for the speakers of the National Assembly and the Senate, and members of the National Assembly and the Senate. We thank you for the just laws that the last parliament passed during their term, and pray that these laws will be used to promote justice in our land. May you endow our members of parliament, current 13th parliament and senate, wisdom as they debate and formulate new laws. We pray that your Holy Spirit may suppress them in all selfish desires, both personal and party-driven, that often lead to subjective legislation that in the long run hurt our collective dreams and aspirations as a nation. We pray that you, you stir up them to be sensitive to your will as they discharge their, their duties. We ask you, O oh God, also to look after our judicial system. We can continue to pray that Kenya will uphold justice 
as a country that observes the rule of law, we now pray for the judiciary and its officers that the ex executive, as they execute their mandate, they will always strive to ensure that justice rolls on like river, on like a river uh, that never falls. May you, in your mercy, remember the Chief Justice Mother Kome, her deputy Philomena Philomen Muilu, and Judicial Service Commission, judges of the Supreme Court, judges of the Court of Appeal, judges of the High Court, and magistrates across the country. We thank you for these, your servants, and ask for godly wisdom on them as they interpret laws and pass judgment in seeking to settle disputes that they will always be directed by truth. May you keep them away from evil forces that are bent on compromising their independence and professional conduct so that justice may prevail at all times, regardless of the state of the persons involved. May you fill them with the spirit of bold boldness so that their, your name may be glorified. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. William <laughs> Your Excellency, the President, the Right Honourable Speaker of the National Assembly, Honourable Members of Parliament, invited guests, you may now take your seats. Order members, Your Excellency, Honorable Dr. William Samoy Ruto, CGH, President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces, the Right Honorable Speaker of the National Assembly, the Honorable Moses Wetangla, EGH MP, Honorable Members of Parliament, Article 132.1 of the Constitution of Kenya requires the President to address the opening of each newly elected parliament. By a letter, reference number OP, stroke CAB.26, stroke 417, 
stroke volume 1, 38, dated 21st of September 2022, His Excellency the President notified the Speakers of Parliament of his intention to address the newly elected Parliament on Thursday 29th September 22 in the National Assembly Chamber, Parliament Buildings at 2.30 p.m. Accordingly, and pursuant to Article 132.1a of the Constitution, and further pursuant to Standing Order Number 24.1 of the Standing Orders of the Senate, by Gazette Notice Number 11266, which was published in the Kenya Gazette of 22nd September 2022, I gave notice of this joint sitting to all honorable senators. Honorable members, this joint sitting is therefore properly convened. I thank you. Your Excellency, Honorable Dr. William Samoy Ruto, CGH, President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces, the Honorable Speaker of the Senate, Right Honorable Amazon Kingi, the Honorable Lady Justice Mara Kome, EGH, Chief Justice and President of the Supreme Court of Kenya, <coughs> Honorable Members of Parliament, Members of the Diplomatic Corps, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. Article 132.1a of the Constitution of Kenya requires the President to address the opening of each newly elected Parliament. In this regard, pass one to the provisions of Article 132.1a of the Constitution and the provisions of Standing Order Number 21 of the National Assembly Standing Orders, and by Gazette Notice Number 11265 which was published on 23rd September 2022, I gave notice of this joint sitting to the members of the National Assembly. Accordingly, honorable members, this joint sitting is properly convened. Your Excellency, it's also custom of Parliament to recognize invited guests seated at the Speaker's row, the public servant's bench, and the speaker's gallery. I therefore wish to recognize the following guests who are seated in the speaker's role. Her Excellency Mama Rachel Ruto, First Lady of the Republic of Kenya, and members of the First Family. His Excellency Rigard Kashagwa, Deputy President of the Republic, and Mama Pastor Dokas. We are also pleased to host the former Vice President of the Republic, Honorable Musalia Mudavadi, EGH. Also in the Speaker's role this afternoon are former Speakers of the Houses of Parliament, the Right Honorable Justin B. N. Muturi, my immediate predecessor, and the Right Honorable Governor Kenneth Lusaka, EGH. Your Excellency, Allow me to also recognize the chairperson of the Council of Governors, the Honorable Anwai Guru EGH, who is the governor of Kirinyaga County. Also present in the, is the Honorable Johnston Sakaja, governor of Nairobi County. The Honorable Martin Martine Moshisho, chairperson of the Deputy Governor's Caucus, who is the Deputy Governor of Gajado County. Also in the speaker's row is the Honorable David Maraga, EGH, former Chief Justice of Kenya. I equally recognize one George Luchiri Wajakoya, who was a presidential candidate in the last general election. Your Excellency, last but not least, allow me also to give a special mention of the Chief of the General Staff, General Dr. Robert Kariuki Kibochi and the respective service commanders, the Deputy Inspector General of the National Police Service and other leaders of our disciplined forces that are all seated at the bar of the House. We remain grateful for their distinguished service to this nation. 
Honorable members, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is now my singular honor and privilege to invite His Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces to address this special sitting of Parliament. I thank you. Your Excellency, please address the joint sitting of the Houses of Parliament. Asante ni sana. Tafadhali tuketi. The Honorable Speakers of uh, the National Assembly and Senate, Honorable Members of the National Assembly and Senate, by the grace of God, it is my pleasure to address this inaugural session of the 13th Parliament following the August 9th general elections. It is important to note that we have made very positive progress. This parliament has recorded the highest number of re-elected members of parliament ever. In the National Assembly, a record 193 members have been re-elected, 50 more than were re-elected in 2017. While in the Senate, 17 senators have been re-elected. This confirms the increased confidence of the people of Kenya in their leaders and institutions affirming the maturity of our democracy. Another milestone is the election of women legislators elected into single member constituencies. In this year's election, 29 women were elected members of the National Assembly, six more than were elected in 2017. This is a manifestation of the growing confidence in the contribution of women leadership in decision making, in our governance, and in our political institutions. I am certain that this positive trend will continue into the future. It is also instructive that the same confidence in Parliament has been shown in the executive. In 2013, the president was elected with at least 25% of voters in 30 counties, 34 counties in 2017, and 39 counties in the just concluded elections. Again, further demonstrating the deepening pluralism and inclusivity of our democracy. I therefore take this special opportunity to congratulate all of you on your election in the last general election and the subsequent nominations of our nominated members of parliament. The confidence demonstrated by Kenyans in us and our institutions should inspire us to raise the bar in our service to the nation and accountability to the electorate. It is also my singular honor to congratulate our speakers, the Honorable Moses Wetangula and the Honorable Amazon Kingi for overwhelming confidence of members to preside over the respective houses of parliament. I also congratulate members who have been elected to parliamentary leadership positions and wish each one of you wisdom, strength, and success in steering our legislative affairs. We gather here on the tranquil side of a competitive election where we all came to grips with the turbulent energies of political competition that characterize our uniquely Kenyan brand of democracy. It is true, this election 
was an intensely contested election. Nevertheless, that it was peaceful and democratic again confirms the coming of age of our democracy. I submit to you that the fact that the election was so close is an indication of is an indication that what unites us is always much more greater than what divides us. With the support of Kenyans, we have dislodged ethnicity as the central organizing principle of our politics, thereby retiring for good the ethnic mobilization and personality cults, together with their culture and practices of exclusion, discrimination, patronage, tribalism, and nepotism. We took this assignment further with a paradigm shift of issue-based political leadership anchored in credible platforms, feasible programs, and transformative commitments aimed at positively affecting the well-being of all Kenyans from the bottom up. In summary, and this only happens, by the way, in Kenya, the sitting deputy president became the candidate of the opposition. And the leader of the opposition became the candidate of government. And as things would be, the opposition candidate won the election and became president. <laughs> and the president became the leader of the opposition party. <laughs> That's the beauty of our democracy. <laughs> and it only happens in Kenya. In the process, we also affirmed the sovereignty of the people of Kenya as the ultimate decision makers as envisaged in the Constitution. I promise to lead an administration dedicated to the just and fair government of all Kenyans in order to deliver a Kenya for everybody. I commit to be the loyal, hardworking, devoted president of every Kenyan and my administration will serve all without regard to any distinction, real or imagined. Certainly, service delivery under my administration shall be impartial regardless of political affiliation or voter preference. Kenya is our home and we remain united as one strong family. For these reasons, I want to persuade you that the legislative agenda I stand here to prosecute deserves the bipartisan support of this House. My administration is pursuing a transformational program that offers a uniquely all Kenyan moment, which calls for unity of purpose in the legislature. We are committed to serving all Kenyans in all wards of each constituency and all counties in every region throughout the Republic of Kenya. After all, we all serve the same boss, the people, and their sovereign interests are our operating principle and purpose. I will run an administration that is open, that is transparent, and my administration will rely on oversight from this House to make sure the public gets value for every cent invested in every policy, project, and program. Consequently, I ask Parliament to consider a mechanism in the standing orders to facilitate cabinet secretaries to articulate government agenda, explain policy, and answer questions on the floor of the House to enhance 
executive accountability to the people of Kenya through their elected representatives. On this matter of oversight and holding government accountable, my administration commits to restore the place of parliament in our democracy by respecting the autonomy and oversight authority of parliament on the executive. Equally, I am a firm believer in democracy and the rule of law. That is why my first executive action when I took office was to undo a legacy of acts and omissions that had incrementally undermined the independence of the judiciary. For avoidance of doubt, the judiciary is an arm of government just like parliament and my administration will be intentional in respecting the constitutionally mandated systems of checks and balances. It is in this spirit that I will be seeking additional resources to support the bottom-up scaling of justice and empower the judiciary to acquire capacity and develop the infrastructure needed to more efficiently adjudicate and expeditiously conclude corruption cases, commercial disputes, and all other matters that today are a huge backlog on the judiciary. Honorable members, to implement the pledges and commitments set out in our plan, my administration is committed to investing in the requisite enablers and infrastructure to provide a sound foundation for its execution. These are interventions intended to create a conducive environment for effective, efficient, and sustainable realization of our national transformation. We are on a mission to dramatically scale up productivity in agriculture and make sure that every Kenyan farmer, fisherman, and pastoralist contributes to sustainable economic growth by contributing to adequate and affordable food, generating greater incomes, and producing the raw materials required by the agro-industrial and manufacturing value chains. This will boost Kenya's export performance and create millions of jobs. Consequently, we have been deliberate in our efforts to restore sanity and introduce greater responsibility in the management of public resources. One significant intervention is the resolve to abandon consumption subsidies in favor of supporting and investing in production. This is why we have made available fertilizer to our farmers at cheaper rates of 3,500 per 50 kilogram bag down from 6,500. We are exploring further mechanisms to bring these prices down. We have an obligation to redeem our pledge to our small traders, the hawkers, the mamambogas, the border borders, that every person who sells any good or service gets to work and earns a decent livelihood enough to place them on the path to wealth through saving and investment. The hustler economy has to flourish and form the foundation of broader economic transformation while catalyzing the widening of the national revenue base. Our agenda here is to take necessary measures to create an enabling environment for business people to thrive and decriminalize enterprise. Affordable credit makes a huge difference in the rate of business growth. Access to affordable credit is like a magic formula. 
The current Credit Reference Bureau approach of blacklisting data is zero-sum, punitive, and has arbitrarily locked millions of businesses out of the credit system. It is time to shift the formula to a credit scoring system, which allows lenders to apply customer segmentation and at the same time end the stigma of blacklisting. We have held productive conversations with operators of the Fuliza and Mshuari platforms on the modalities of reducing their lending rates. I am happy to report today that yesterday our engagement finally culminated in undertaking by the platform operators to reduce the cost, the cost of credit by 50%, and this is a significant step towards unlocking billions of shillings needed to spur economic activity by once again expanding financial inclusion. My administration will allocate resources every year to the, Hustler, to the Hustler Fund, from which micro, small, and medium enterprises can access affordable credit to start and expand their businesses. I promised yesterday that we will leverage on technology in the management and disbursement of these funds. And shortly, we will be bringing to this house the legislation and the regulatory framework to operationalize this fund. There is tremendous opportunity for this house to fully take up its role in resolving the systemic issues of limit to access affordable homes and affordable financing. This administration will unlock housing for the nation by doing a couple of interventions. Number one, we will work on the provision of land for affordable housing, both public and private. And number two, we will provide access to affordable and stable financing for those engaged in social, affordable housing across the country. These two measures will allow, will allow us to undertake mass housing production and thereby shape our approach to urban development and spatial planning, which, unlike before, will deliver sustainable and inclusive human settlement. I also wish to express our intention to bring to this House legislative proposals to provide a framework for a housing offtake plan, which will create incentives for developers to invest more money into our housing strategy and on the strength of guaranteed offtake of completed units. To actualize the enabling infrastructure, we intend to take the following steps. A public-private partnership funding framework is envisaged for large capital projects in order to achieve our target of raising access to water from the current 60% to 80%, Kenya shillings 500 billion is required. Government can provide this gradually, but the private sector can mobilize it all at once. We will thus adopt a public-private partnership framework by entering into water purchase agreements with investors. I have already instructed the PPP unit at Treasury to work on the regulations that will facilitate the mechanism like we have in our energy sector for investors to work with us on a formula 
under a water purchase agreement uh, instrument. This way, we will achieve water for all in less than a decade. Concerning electricity, we shall facilitate the development of innovative and effective modalities to provide better off-grid systems, including enabling consumers to form small cooperatives for that purpose. And in health, we are bound by duty to take measures to make universal health coverage a reality and liberate Kenyans and their families from the threat of harrowing poverty that stalks them every time a family member falls seriously ill. In our plan, and through your support, we will restructure our primary health system so that we put more resources into promotive, preventive, and early diagnosis. A key driver of this realization is the National Health Insurance Fund, whose restructuring is not only necessary for efficiency, but also enables it become a fit for purpose social insurance scheme that caters for all, including those suffering from chronic diseases. Digital technology has become a critical player in economic growth. We will capitalize on existing technology and innovation in the public and private sector to distribute the Hustler Fund as promised in our plan. I call upon financial institutions and our young people in innovation to participate in the digital economy by redesigning their products to serve the goal of empowering millions armed with grand ideas and are only waiting for the funds to finance their dreams to reality. Honorable speakers, honorable members, I have news, and it is not very good news. Our financial situation is not very good. For Kenya to grow to an upper income country, we need to invest at least 25% of our GDP. Our current national savings is below 10% of our GDP, why, which translates to an investment savings deficit of 15% of our GDP. Over the last decade, we have sought to close this gap with public borrowing. This year alone, we budgeted to borrow 900 billion to finance both development and recurrent expenditure. You're all aware that our total collection is 2.1 trillion, which is only enough to pay debt and to pay salaries. Everything else we have to borrow. The government members should never borrow to finance recurrent expenditure. It is not right. It is not prudent, it is not sustainable, it is simply wrong. We must bring ourselves and our country to sanity. Over the next three years, we must reverse this and go back to the situation where government contributes to the national saving efforts by keeping recurrent expenditure below revenue. To this end, I have instructed Treasury to work with ministries to find at least 300 billion shillings in this year's budget so that we can remove it because the market cannot sustain the kind of borrowing we are doing as government. Next year, we will bring it further down so that by the third year, we have a recurrent 
budget surplus. This we must do, members, because it is the right thing for us to do. On the revenue side, I am committed and determined to ensure that our tax system is responsive to the needs of the economy. It must be equitable, efficient, and customer friendly. The economic principle of equitable taxation require that the tax burden reflects ability to pay. This is best achieved by a hierarchy that taxes wealth, then consumption, then incomes, and lastly trade, in that order of preference, so that those who are wealthy and have the capacity to pay should pay more. And those at the bottom of the pyramid should be what is proportional. This is best achieved by our tax regime that is different from our current tax system, which falls way far short of this. We are overtaxing trade and undertaxing wealth we will be proposing tax measures that begin to move us in the right direction. We will also work with the Kenya Revenue Authority on a culture change to make it a people-friendly, customer-centric organization. I am of the view that we should rename it the Kenya Revenue Service in line with the pro proposed transformation. The very large government borrowing requirements has also undermined the business sector contribution to national savings and investment efforts. These measures outlined above will also address the problem of government crowding out the private sector from the credit market. It will encourage banks to go back to lending to businesses and also bring down interest rates so that the private sector can also contribute to reducing the savings investment deficit. In many countries, social security and particularly pension systems contributes significantly to the national savings. Our current social security infrastructure, both public, that is the NSSF, and private, only cater for people in formal employment, thereby excluding the vast majority of working Kenyans. There is no retired Kenyan today who is living on their NSSF retirement benefits. The meager current contribution of Kenya shillings 200 a month adds up to 72,000 over 30 years. There is no rate of return on earth that can grow this into an, adic an adequate pension. I mean, we just have to be honest with ourselves. You cannot pretend that you are saving by saving 200 shillings. And it happens across board. Not surprising, many Kenyans scramble to provide for themselves by investing in the 50 by 100 plots of land, thereby exacerbating the problem of land fragmentation, price inflation, as well as, as well as land fraud. We intend to overhaul our social security infrastructure to make it inclusive, to encourage, to encourage those excluded to save. I will be proposing a national savings drive to encourage those in the informal sector to set up their retirement savings plan for every 
two shillings saved in the scheme up to a maximum of 6,000 a year, the, the government will contribute a shilling for every two shillings saved by the private sector. Meaning that every Kenyan who will save 6,000 a year, the government of Kenya will give them 3,000 shillings. As part of the response to the ongoing drought, we have embarked on distribution of relief supplies to 3.5 million Kenyans who are affected by drought in 23 arid and semi-arid counties. The ultimate solution to the drought cycle in our country is mitigation of climate change and its adverse effects. We must act urgently to keep global heating levels below 1.5% degrees centigrade, help those in need, promote the use of renewable energy, and thus end addiction to fossil fuels. Honorable members, I know the contribution to the National Government Constituency Development Fund has made in making life better for our citizens. Having served Having served in Parliament for 15 years, before and after the establishment of the National Government CDF, I know the difference it makes is monumental. I believe there is a way CDF can be aligned to the tenets of the Constitution. In this regard, I also extend to heart that both houses should also be adequately resourced for oversight duties. With regard to the Senate and its constitutional mandate, I believe the two houses should work together to set up the Senate Oversight Fund. This will be used to provide oversight of the millions of resources that are sent to counties. Honorable members, the people of Kenya rightly expect much of us. We have our work cut out. This is our chance to achieve real change by working together to make Kenya a land of equal opportunity for all where every Kenyan is proud to call home. Let us all play our part in the service of our employers, the people of Kenya. I will be making other statements going into the future. I will make my statement today short. May the good Lord bless you and God bless the great people of Kenya. Thank you. Honorable members, kindly let us take our seats. Honorable members, please be upstanding. Your Excellency, the President, 
the Right Honorable Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Members, we have come to the conclusion of the business of the day, and it is now time to adjourn. The Senate stands adjourned until Tuesday, 4th of October 2022, at 2.30 p.m. in the Senate Chamber Parliament Buildings. Honorable members, the National Assembly will equally stand adjourned until Tuesday, 4th October 2022, at 2.30 p.m. And before we adjourn, my apologies to the members of the judiciary, those who carried my speech, left out the acknowledgement of our members of the judiciary present in the House, apart from the Chief Justice. We also have the Deputy Chief Justice, Honorable Philemon Mwilu. We have Justice Daniel Musinga, President of the Supreme Court, uh, sorry, of the Court of Appeal. We have Lady Justice Hannah Okwengu, Justice of Appeal. We have Honorable Justice Eric Ogola, Principal Judge of the High Court. We have Honorable Lady Justice Maureen Onyango, Principal Judge of the Employment and Labor Courts of Kenya. And we have the Honorable Anne Amadi, Chief Registrar of the Judiciary. Your Excellency, Honorable Members, may I take this opportunity to invite all honorable members and our guests to our reception at the Parliament Courtyard. May I also request all honorable members and our guests that you remain standing in silence in your places until the procession of His Excellency the President, the speakers, the Supreme Court judges and the spiritual leaders leave the house. If the Honorable Chebukati is present in the house, we also... All the Honorable Members, on your behalf, I have the distinct honor to acknowledge his presence. Thank you.